Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very, very important topic, one that has very practical implications and ones that I want you to walk away from and being completely empowered and knowledgeable, and that is about retinol and the do's and don'ts around it. So why is this so important? Well, number one, retinol is sort of like the superhero of skincare ingredients. Trust me when I say this, if you're not using retinol as part of your anti-aging routine, you're missing out big time. You do not want this particular ingredient out of your routine. And you'll understand why when we get into it in a second here. But it's also one of those topics and products that truly requires some knowledge to be able to use it right because historically people have had a really, really hard time getting used to using retinol because it does have some pushback. Meaning there's, I'm sure you've heard cases of people using Retin-A for example and they get redness, they get inflamed, they get you know flaky, all that kind of stuff. So immediately they're like, oh, I can't use this. It, it, my skin doesn't, isn't uh, compatible with it and they drop it and they're missing out. So after you listen to these do's and don'ts, you will understand how you can have a better relationship with retinols and how to succeed in getting yourself on the level that you wanna be and attaining your anti-aging goals. All right, so let's break it down. All right, so why is retinol so powerful? And why is it so important? Well, because retinols hit anti-aging right in the gut. Aging changes that are happening come down to basically these changes. You got lines and wrinkles, which comes from thinning of the skin, which comes from loss of collagen. You really, you have to understand that loss of collagen is, is a persistent process that starts in our mid-20s and gets worse and worse as we age, especially for women, perimenopause and menopause, it's like going off a cliff. Skin starts to thin, lines and wrinkles, crepey, etc. Number two, Pigmentation, we see sunspots as the skin ages. That's a very common thing of uneven tone. Then there's also pores and dehydration and dullness. All these things are happening to the skin and makes the skin look old. Well, guess what? Retinols affect every one of them directly. So it increases collagen stimulation, increases cell turnover. It exfoliates the surface of the skin, so the dullness improves. It directly affects the production of melanin, so the pigmentation decreases. So you're talking about a multitasking, very powerful ingredient, and that's why it's so critical to have this as part of your routine. It's also one of the most studied active ingredients in the entire skincare game. Trust me when I say this, no ingredient has been studied and published about more than Retin-A. I'm talking about 40 plus years of clinical studies, I mean, good clinical studies where you take skin biopsies of somebody, and then you take skin biopsies later on and you see, oh wow, the skin's gotten thicker over time. Or that at the genetic level, the fibroblasts are increasing collagen stimulation as a result of it. There's just so much that has been done to study this product over the last 40 years that we can all sit back and just say, all right, cool, this product, this particular ingredient, does what it's supposed to do. So let's talk about history real quick, very briefly. So Retin-A is a prescription uh, product. It's a derivative of vitamin A. The class is called retinoids. So let's start from the beginning. Retinoids have two different varieties. They have Retin-A and they have retinols. Historically, Retin-A's were the only show in town. You have to get a prescription and you use it. And it was primarily used for acne control. Why? Because the exfoliation aspect of it, for the oil control aspect of it, it could decrease the production of those things that lead to acne, so it was an acne drug, basically. But then the people found that it had these anti-aging effects, like anything else, started then using it for more cosmetic purposes. But you needed a prescription, then, Downstream, several decades later, retinols, which are over the counter, <clears throat> came up. So they're also derivatives from vitamin A. They basically do exactly what retin A does. The concentrations are gonna look different, but the 
fundamental changes that we just discussed exist for both of them. So most people now are not going to prescription level Retin-A, they're just getting retinols, and retinols are found in a number of different uh, brands and ingredients and all that stuff. And just to be clear, for when I developed the trifecta, when I developed CaramMD, I knew for sure that retinol had to be a part of the trifecta. I mean, for all the reasons I'm telling you, I knew it had to be an included component of a good skincare routine. So it exists in the third step of the trifecta, which is Illuminate. There's some unique aspects of it that I'm gonna highlight as we go through so you just kind of understand when it comes to do's and don'ts, how we incorporated those understandings and the goal of making it available for any skin type, sensitive or not, a male or female, young or old, and compatible with any, and you'll understand how that kind of played out. So it's interesting kind of a story, but the bottom line is retinol once, or retin-A, once it gets into the skin, either one of them, goes through two different chemical transformations to finally get to a point where it's actually used in the form of retinoic acid at the level of the cell, that's where this stuff is being done. So there's a conversion step that goes along and that is where activity begins. All right, so let's start with the do's. Number one, start slow. Slow and steady wins the race with skincare, guys. I'm telling you this, this is like, should be right here. You're not, this is not surgery. This is not going into the operating room, getting a vertical restore, coming out, you know, two weeks later and looking 20 years younger. This is a slow, steady, more or less like a lifestyle type of a, of a concept. But these actives are working, they're working slowly chipping away and preventing skin aging, but also restoring skin aging as well. So here's the deal. Most times, if you go out and buy a, a retinol cream or a retinol drop or whatever the situation is, there are some things that, that happen to the skin. One typically is that there's this reaction that occurs. And a lot of times people take that reaction as like, oh, I, I can't use retinols anymore because my skin's gotten red, it's gotten fired up and it just looks terrible and they throw it away. This has been the story forever. I mean, this has been the number one reason why 100% of people are not on retinols. But here's some ways around it. So do, go slow, use low concentrations. Honestly, the lower concentration, the better to begin with. If your skin is still having issue with it, go twice a week, then go three times a week, every other day, etc. Then after two, three weeks, then go to every day. The goal is to get to using this every day. Although some people say five times a week is enough, I say use it every day. If you can get to that, to that point, you should. But really it helps a lot by going low concentration. Now here's where one of the interesting things that, that um, you know, my general learning, that you get benefits from even low concentrations as long as it's being used regularly. So when we developed the trifecta, Illuminate, I decided, you know, because whenever I went up to a higher concentration, I got the same problems that people had. So we decreased the, the concentrations nice and low, and then what ended up happening is people can use it regularly. But we also did something unique. We used a time-released component of retinol, meaning that it slowly releases it, retinol in a, in a compounded form into the skin over time. So it's not bombarding it all at once. And we microdosed it, meaning that instead of getting it all at once, I split the dose between AM and PM. And that's simply the way the, the product is meant to be used, morning and night. So that way, those reactions are minimized by getting a little bit at a time and then releasing it slowly. There are individual retinols that can be used that way too. It's just you have to look for them. They're basically like time release or slow release. And that helps get your skin acclimated and not have like a rush of retinol all at the same time. But as a general rule, you wanna stay with something around 0.01 to 0 0.03 in the very beginning. That's a light dose, still gets benefits, but your skin will adapt to it. And then if you wanna push it a little bit further, you go up to the next concentration level, and then ultimately 0.2% to 1% is the maximum. It's for advanced users you know, that have their skin acclimated already and they can, they can tolerate that. You don't have to move in that direction, but as long as you're using it consistently and you can, why not push the envelope a little bit? And folks, the way I look at this, quite honestly, is just like exercise, right? Yeah, it's great to go in and pound the weights and go hard two hours a day or whatever it is, but it's hard for a lot of people to exercise at that level. A lot of studies have been done that as little as seven minutes of exercise every single day has incredible compounding benefits over time. So consistency, even at low doses of retinol, 
is the, is the magic there. So don't get hung up over concentrations, just get it into your skin and let that do the, the trick and do the magic. Okay, number two, do use it at night. So generally speaking, again, we're not talking about trifecta, which has its split dosing um, routine that you can use at AM, PM. I'm talking about just normal retinol that you go to a, to a store or your dermatology office, et cetera. Generally, it's meant to be used at night. And the reason is that retinols are light sensitive. So putting it on right before you go out is not necessarily a great thing. Light exposure can deactivate it. And then the other aspect of it is sun in it itself can make the skin sensitive to the retinol. Those effects that we're talking about can be exacerbated if you're getting a lot of sun on it. So definitely, I would say generally using retinol at night is safer and easier on the skin, so I would recommend doing it at night. And for those of you who use Trifecta or are thinking about using it, you're like, wait, you just told me to use it at, at you know nighttime. Remember, it's split dose, so light doses, and it's a compounded slow release. So when we use it AM, PM, it's completely fine to use it in the daytime. We're just trying to get the total dose into you over a 24 hour period. And there's no uh, morning or night considerations with the retinol that's in the Illuminate. Number three, do use it with moisturizer. Retinol has a drying effect, generally speaking and using it with a hyaluronic acid type of a moisturizer that draws fluid and helps moisturize the skin is very important. For example, there's been some you know, considerations, theories that like use it as a retinol sandwich. Basically it's like a moisturizer, let it on for five or 10 minutes, then use the retinol, then use a the moisturizer again. So you're getting like lots of moisture to the skin and the retinol can be more tolerated. That might be a lot to go through. You might not need to do that. Just get the, the uh, moisturizer on after you put the retinol you know, wait a five, 10 minutes, then put the put the hyaluronic acid-based moisturizer on and your skin will, will appreciate it. It'll be um, less dry, etc. Just a note, we have hyaluronic acid in the Illuminate. So we thought of that component and make it really easy so you don't have to do it as a separate step. It just comes in together. All right, number four, do use it with sun protection. Folks, you hear me talk about this all the time. If you're serious about skin, and you're serious about anti-aging, you gotta take care of your, your sun protection. You gotta be kind of OCD about it because there's really no point in doing any of this if you're not protecting your skin from the sun because the sun is gonna accelerate skin aging faster than you're gonna gain the changes from all the things that you're doing. So just know this, but for the reasons we just talked about, the sensitivity, all that other stuff that can hypersensitize the skin to UV light, you wanna make sure that if you're using a retinol, you're using broad spectrum sunblock that blocks UVA and UVB at the same time. Usually these are mineral-based uh, zinc or titanium oxide. I like those better. Again, I'm speaking from a US experience. I know internationally in Europe, they have a lot of more advanced sunscreens and sunblocks. So, you know, this is just general considerations, but make sure you're on a, a good, broad spectrum sunblock, whether it's zinc or titanium or some other configuration, but you want to protect your skin from the sun. Number five, do remain consistent. Folks, slow and steady wins the race. Consistency is the key to everything good in our lives, everything good in our lives. And it pertains very directly to retinol. Studies that show people using it for decades, the skin just keeps getting better. Don't use it for like a month or two and then just drop it. Stay consistent with it. You're doing yourself a major, major favor. Number six, do remain patient. Remember, we are living in a world of instant gratification. We think that the second we use a product, we should have magical effects to our skin immediately. Skincare is not like that. It's gonna be slow and steady. Be patient with it. You gotta wait probably at least three months before you start to see the real effects of retinol coming into place. We did studies on our trifecta, and basically at one month, you're starting to see changes, but at two months, those changes are better. Of course, at three months, they're only gonna get better. I have patients on it and people on it who are on it for like a year and a half now, and their skin still keeps getting better and better. Consistency and patience to get you through those, those early stages are very important to get to where you want to be. Number seven, do use it around the eyes. Folks, you don't need a separate eye cream. Retinol is one of the best things. You can put directly underneath your, your lids, right along the, this bone here. You can put a little bit along this area because the skin is thinner there. 
and it starts to get fit and crepey, putting this something that's gonna stimulate collagen and thicken the skin is a huge positive. You want to put it on your eyelids. You don't need a separate eye cream. If you want to, go ahead, but any product that has a retinol or even a Retin-A, you just put it right on the lids. It will do wonders to that area. All right, so let's discuss a few don'ts. Don't number one, if you're not gonna use a time-released, slow-acting retinol, which a lot of brands are starting to get into that space, but if you don't have one of those, definitely do not use it in the morning for the reasons we just described. Nighttime use is better. Don't number two, a lot of brands are incompatible with other products like vitamin C, with glycolic acid, with benzoyl peroxide. So be careful when you're mixing one brand's retinol with another brand's vitamin C. They oftentimes don't go together. You're gonna to have a lot of harsh reactions to the skin. So as a general rule, don't mix those two. But here's the caveat again. Vitamin C, which I'm gonna talk about separately, is a wonder drug as well, is a wonder, wonderful, powerful, active ingredient. You definitely want it as part of your routine. So one way around it, you know, for, for those who are not using the trifecta, you can do one night vitamin C, or use vitamin C in the daytime, retinol at night, use them alternating if you can't put them together because they're gonna to be too harsh. Now we thought of all of this, we engineered it chemically to where vitamin C, retinol, all of that can be used at the same time, a and PM, to get all that like complicated, which goes first, what goes in the morning, what goes at night, out of the way. So those are some of the things that, the benefits that come from when you combine things purposefully, deliberately, so they can live together nicely. But generally speaking, the rule of thumb is don't mix vitamin C and retinol together. Don't number three, don't use it if you're pregnant. Folks, it's not worth it during that period of time to add anything you don't know. I think most OBGYNs agree with that. Generally speaking, you don't wanna use retinols or retin-A's um, at that time. I would 100% ask you to speak with your OBGYN before using any type of active ingredients on your skin. Don't number four. If you're gonna have a laser, if you're gonna have waxing, if you're gonna have a chemical peel, if you're gonna have something done to your skin, don't use it at the same time as the treatment you're having. So stop using the um, retinol three days a week or so, talk to the practitioner who's doing it, confirm how many days they want you to stay off of it, but generally you wanna stop it before you get those type of treatments. So number four is don't use retinols with skin treatments. Don't number five, don't use too much. You don't need that much. We have this like more is better mentality, but the reality is it's not necessary. More can just mean more of those unnecessary complications that you see. Read the directions very carefully. Even if you want to err on the side, err on less. As long as you get it on your skin, even if it's less, it's still doing more for you than not using it at all. So benefit of consistency, and I'm just generally speaking though, it's better to use a little bit every day than it is to use a little bit or the proper amount once or twice a week, which some people do. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense because what you're doing is you're trying to stimulate the cells to do the things you want it to do. That requires consistency. If your cells are seeing this once a week or twice a week, it's just not enough activity for it to start building momentum in the right direction. So even if you can tolerate a little bit, it's better to do it regularly and get it onto your skin. And final don't, folks, don't quit on it, right? Don't be like 90% of the people, my patients included, that have been put on Retin-A's or Retinols and they use it for a few weeks and they literally just quit or a week and they quit because it's like, oh my God, this is just too intense for me. Go into it knowing that you might have a little phase where your skin's gonna react to it, it's gonna get red, it's gonna get inflamed, it's gonna look worse, but you're gonna push through that and guess what, at the end of two weeks or so, your skin's gonna be acclimated to it. And once it gets acclimated to it, you just, you're good to go. And every time you quit, by the way, because you have to go get a laser done or you're gonna go do something else done, you're gonna go through that acclimation phase again. Now, again, I'm talking about retinols in general. Most people don't have that start-stop acclimation issue with the trifecta, with the Illuminate. 
but some do. And we advise them when they contact us, we tell them to basically you know, spread it out every other day, et cetera, but to stick with it and don't quit. Because I, I'm telling you, you're doing yourself the biggest disservice if you quit on retinol. You're doing yourself the biggest disservice by not having retinol as part of your anti-aging skincare routine. All right, folks, I think that is probably the most comprehensive do's and don'ts list and just all there is to know about Retin-A and retinols um, that I've ever found. And I really am very, very pleased to bring this to you. And I want you guys to get inspired by it and motivated by it, be informed by it, empowered by it so that you can make the right decisions for yourself. Any questions you have, please drop them in the uh, comments below. I always do my best to answer as many of them as I can. Um, if you enjoy the skin school topics or anything related to facial rejuvenation, make sure you hit subscribe to get more content like this. Follow our Karam MD um, newsletter journal that comes out once a week and, uh, and it's filled with great information, totally useful, useful stuff when it comes to skincare and, and just overall uh, wellness and anti-aging. So follow the link and get, get uh, on that newsletter. Like if you enjoy this, share it with friends of you that cannot uh, stress how important it is to, to get this information out there and help people uh, learn as much as they can so your friends and family can benefit from it as well. All right, folks, I really enjoyed uh, sharing this with you. Look forward to sharing more and go back and look at some other skin school topics because there's lots of good information out there that uh, you'll enjoy. All right, folks, take care.